السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو لیکچر ٹوینٹی فور آف ڈیٹا مائننگ سو وی آر نیئرنگ دا اینڈ آف دس سیمسٹر وی ہیو جسٹ ٹو تھری لیکچرز لیفٹ اینڈ وی ہیو کور موسٹ آف دا مین ٹاپکس ان دس کورس سو وی آر ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو کور سم ایڈیشنل ٹاپکس سو اینڈ دیز ایڈیشنل ٹاپکس Uh, basically would be decided based on your interest if i get any feedback from you as well as uh, what i think is important so so for today uh, i plan to cover uh, some additional uh, techniques in classification as well as uh, some new few more ideas in clustering so classification and clustering are two very important task in data mining they have numerous applications so Uh, we covered classification quite briefly by discussing only uh, decision trees and random forests. So I'm now going to uh, introduce some other classifiers, specifically the Bayes classifier and the K nearest neighbor classifiers. So these classifiers are also quite easy, but they are also quite powerful. So we need to have a, a tool set of classifiers uh, uh, available to us before we uh, before we start uh, using them in any particular application. So we will discuss these classifiers. Uh, we will also briefly mention again a bit about ensembles, classifier ensembles. So we talked about that before as well as part of uh, decision trees and random forests. And then uh, I will mention a few more things regarding clustering. Specifically, I'll talk about the shared nearest neighbor way of calculating the similarity between two objects. Uh, which is useful for objects that have very high dimensions uh, and it does give you robust results. And once you have the similarity, then you can go ahead and apply any uh, clustering technique, including graph clustering techniques. So that is basically the agenda for today. Uh, maybe in the next couple of lectures, we might discuss a few concepts from web graph mining or web structure mining. Uh, so these would be the remaining topics of this course. We have also planned a guest lecture, uh, most probably on the 27th. Uh, he will be talking about uh, ideas or experiences from the industry. All right. So we have a quiz today around three. So this is going to be our last quiz. So the ninth quiz. So. So since we are going to have nine quizzes, so I'm going to drop two. So N minus two policy would be applied to your quizzes. So two low grades of your quizzes would be dropped before compiling the final grade of the course of the subject. Okay. So any questions? Any questions? So, uh, so let's talk about uh, classification. Again, we discussed classification earlier on as well. And this time I'm going to introduce Bayes classifier. And this is, uh, if, you, if you talk about probability theory, this is the most natural way to do classification. Um, so remember decision trees primarily derive their inspiration or their theory from information theory. So Bayes, th Bayes classifier is probabilistic. It is based on probability theory. And just to reiterate what is classification, so we want to build a model that can assign a label to our objects. So we want to build a model, let's say uh, G or let's say phi, which given an input X, let's say given an input X, which is a representation of our object, 
from some space, of course, would give an output, which is a class of uh, that object. So we want to learn this model phi. Okay? And to do this, we will have labeled data set. So x, of course, if it is a vector, so this would be, uh, and of course, if it is continuous, it could be categorical as well. If it is continuous, it would be values from the real m dimensional space, m distinct features. And then C is a class label. This can come from a number of possible classes. So one, two, two possible, uh, let's say, K classes. Okay, so K class classification problem. And for this, we are given some training data. So we have the object XI and the corresponding label for that object. And we have various such examples, i is equal to one to n. So we have n examples in a training data set. Each example, each object x is represented by m features. Those features can be categorical as well as numeric. Uh, okay. And then of course, the class label C is categorical. It's a label from a possible set of labels where here I define this label as just integers one, two, three, two, k. So they could be anything. So yes, no, spam, not spam, uh, topics like uh, news, um, so topics like sports, politics, religion, and so on. You can depending on the problem. So going back to our base classifier, so what is the base rule? So let's say we have, uh, so we have these variables already defined. So we have a variable that represents the object X. We have a variable that represents the class C. So what we like at the end of the day is probability of class C given some object X, okay? So this is, uh, we want to find the probability of a class, of the class given an object X. And of course, this class C can take on values from one to N. So I'm kind of overloading these terms. So these are variables as well as uh, actual values, okay? But I think it is understood from the context. So if you apply Bayes rule to this, what would happen on the right-hand side? You have probability X given C, probability of C and divided by probability of X. Okay. So this is the Bayes rule. So if you want to, given an X, if you want to find the probability of C, we will need to estimate the right-hand terms, okay? And, uh, and if we are able to do that and we are able to find this probability, then you can make a classification. For, for example, so the probability of, let's say, so the best class C for this object would basically be arg max for all possible Cs of this posterior probability, C given X, okay? So let's say if you have a three class problem, C could be, let's say one, C could be equal to two, C could be equal to three. So you'll find the probability of C is equal to one given this object, you find the probability of C is equal to two given this object, and you find the probability of C is equal to three given this object. Okay. So given if you are able to find these probabilities, what is would be the best class? Very simple. Just take the class for which this posterior probability is the maximum. That's what the arg max means. Okay. We want that class that has the highest posterior probability for this object X. Okay. So of course, to compute this, you need the right-hand side. The right-hand side, what do you have? This this is usually called the likelihood in machine learning as well as in statistics. 
ठीक है लाइकलीहुड वाई डू नो कॉल इट द लाइकलीहुड लाइकलीहुड दैट वी विल जनरेट दिस ऑब्जेक्ट एक्स गिवन सम क्लास सी ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड इज द गिवन पार्ट सो दैट इज ऑलवेज ऑल इज इंस्टेंशिएटेड इट्स इट हैज अ वैल्यू सम क्लास सी वी वॉन्ट द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स सो दिस इज लाइकलीहुड एंड देन ऑफकोर्स दिस दिस इज कॉल्ड द प्रायर प्रायर प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ a particular class so c1 c2 c3 what is the power probability without knowing anything else and then on the denominator we have probability of x so when we are making a decision we don't really need to calculate this of course you can calculate it by summing it summing out if you have all the possible class labels available to you but we don't need to calculate it so just so i mentioned r max c of probability of c given x so this is also arg max c of probability of x given c probability of c theek hai divided by probability of x so we want to find the maximum of this expression but if you look at this expression uh, the denominator remains the same for a particular x so the probability of x would remain the same for any particular x and of course c is, c would change c 1 2 3 up to k so this would remain the same so essentially you can drop the lower term in the arg max theek okay. hai you can drop the lower term and just find the maximum of these two terms the product of these two terms so the c the value of c for which this product is the highest is the best class label so c star is this theek hai so this essentially is the bayes classifier so this is called the bayes classifier of course to use it you will need to estimate the parameters on the right hand side or estimate the terms on the right hand side from your data so that is the learning problem theek okay? hai and this is actually the estimation problem so we will need to estimate probability of x given c and we need to estimate probability of c theek okay? hai from data theek okay? hai so once we are able to estimate this then we can apply the formula and find the class for any new object x by applying the bayes rule theek okay? hai uh so you can estimate these parameters in a number of ways uh, and we won't be able to go into the detail of that so i'll just very briefly mention a few things here and then discuss a simplified form which is a naive bayes classifier and then move on so you so for this estimation you have both parametric parametric methods so in this case essentially you assume a uh assume a uh parametric distribution for the expression and then estimate the parameters so for example you can estimate assume that the probability of x given c which is likelihood is a gaussian or multivariate gaussian or normal distribution so you you know what a normal distribution is like a bell shape it would have some parameters like the means and the standard deviation so those are the parameter you will have to estimate those parameters from the data so this is the learning problem theek okay. hai once you have done that you are you can then uh, use that model to estimate the probability of x given c similarly for probability of c because that would be a discrete distribution uh, usually it will be uh, but nulli if it is binary or it would be a categorical distribution it is more than two values 
The other option is non-parametric approaches or method. So in this case, we do not assume any functional form for the distribution. We get the probability directly from the data. Okay. Uh, usually in the form of density. So this approach may generally we have what is known as density estimation. Or more specifically, the more commonly that's used is kernel. Kernel is a small function, kernel density estimation. Okay. So, so this is another way of estimating these parameters. And here we basically estimate the probabilities, let's say probability of C or probability X given C directly from the data, the training data. Okay. I think in the machine learning course, we typically discuss this in more detail. Uh, so, but I wouldn't go into the details here. Mm -hmm. And of course, if your data set, of course, you will have to tailor this distribution according to the types of attributes in your data set. So if your attributes are discrete, then you will be using some discrete distribution. If your attributes are continuous, then you will be using some continuous distribution to estimate these parameters. Okay, now let me uh, discuss another simplified version of this base classifier, which you call the naive base classifier. Okay. So previously, Marapa C star, arg max, C, probability of X, C, probability of Y. So in the naive base classifier, the likelihood is we break down. We make an assumption to simplify this estimation. Okay. So remember X, as I said, is a vector. It has M features. So X is a vector. So probability X given C, this is the likelihood. So this we approximate with the product of the individual features given the class, not the joint. Remember, So if I want to write it completely, so this is x1, x2, xm, a joint of all the features for this particular x given a class C. Okay? So this we can simplify as the product. This is the pi, product is simple, hota hai, pi product over i. from 1 to m of the individual xi given c. Okay? So the full joint is now broken down using probability theory uh, into the products of individual features given a class, not the full joint of all the features given the class. So this usually simplifies the estimation problem significantly. Okay. So this classifier with this assumption, which is basically called the conditional uh, class conditional independence assumption, because we are assuming that each feature is independent of the other feature given the class. So class C is given right hand side pe, given pe likhava is given. So we are assuming that each feature is known uh, is independent of the others given the class. So that's why we can break this into product rather than the full joint. So this, as I said, by making this assumption, your classifier becomes simpler. You need fewer parameters. Estimation becomes easier. So this particular case, I will discuss kar leta and then we will move on. The so one particular case which has application in text classification is called multinomial naive base 
die base classifier. So as the name suggests, this assumes that uh, the distribution is multinomial. So multinomial is a uh, distribution, discrete distribution, okay? Uh, which is of course a parametric distribution, okay? <clears throat> So essentially, this applies to, as I said, most appropriate for text classification or other problems whose features are described by non negative numbers uh, integers karde. although real numbers is, would also work but let me just write integers so in other words if your features of your problem is def described by uh, integers which which are non negative then this works very well and for text this is possible so for example aapke features words ho sakte hai, text ke liye so let's say the word D hai, ek feature hai. So let's say the word uh, Lahore hai, core feature hai. Word A hai, core feature hai. And then let's say a core feature, let's say good hai. So let's say ye aapki vocabulary set hai. Ek document hai, ga uski values aa jayenge aapke paas. D aapke paas teen dafa hai, Lahore ek dafa hai, A teen dafa hai, or good one dafa hai. Thik hai? So let's say this is one document. There might be another document, D zero dafa hai, Lahore do dafa hai, A zero dafa hai good zero the fire so this is another document and then of course this would be your training data set or your test data set uh, we are writing the features so we might have another zero hai ye two hai ye two hai or ye one hai and so on because so you have a feature set which you define in this case the feature is were our words in your corpus and for each document you count the number of times that word occurs so underlying this behavior is the multinomial distribution. So this data set is generated by a multinomial distribution. I won't go into the details of that. Uh, of course, in NLP, we covered detail in cover and in machine learning. Mein bhi cover hota. So essentially, given this setup, so you can estimate the probability. So the probability of, for example, some xi given some class, you can call it. Estimation. So in this particular case, let's say my probability of D given class C is equal to one. Let's say yes, sorry, very example C is equal to one key. Hai. Let's say it. So there are three documents. Let's say all of them belong to class one. So the third document has zero. D occurring in it. The second has also zero in it, D. And then we have three in the first. Okay. So three words occur in the first document, zero in the second, three, uh, zero also in the third. So this estimation, usually through the maximum likelihood estimate, which is the approach, is simply the count of the times that you see count of word D in class one divided by total count of words in class one. Okay. So this would be numerator with the three aga. Okay. Denominator may total counts of words. So all the counts of all the words in the class one. So it's may have, uh, I think it will be difficult for me to count. Let's see. So three one, three one, you have eight okay. It's got total eight. Tha. It's got total two. Hai. It's got five. Hai. See, can I? So we have uh, 15, right? 8, 2, 5. So total 15.
सो फिफ्टीन तो ये आपके पास एस्टिमेट आ गया डी का एंड इस तरह आप फिर बाकियों का भी निकाल सकते हैं एंड ऑफ कोर्स प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ सी इज इक्वल टू वन वुड बी द काउंट ऑफ क्लास वन डिवाइड बाय टोटल नंबर ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स इन दिस केस और ऑब्जर्वेशंस ठीक है तो ये इस तरह निकल आएगा एंड फॉर एनी अदर क्लास सो वंस यू हैव दिस पैरामीटर यू कैन देन गो हैड एंड मेक क्लासिफिकेशन ठीक है जब भी कोई नया डॉक्यूमेंट आएगा ये पैरामीटर्स आपके पास होंगे उसकी फीचर्स वैल्यूज भी होंगी यू गो हेड एंड अप्लाई द नाइफ बेज अप्रोच एंड यू फाइंड आउट द प्रोबेबिलिटी तो नेक्स्ट से मेरे पास एक कोई डॉक्यूमेंट आता है नया डॉक्यूमेंट है दी लाहौर इज गुड फॉर एग्जाम्पल ठीक है इसके मैंने क्लास ढूंढनी है सो वट वट वुड आई डू इज आई विल हैव द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ दी मैं लिखूंगा गिवन सी इज इक्वल टू वन के साथ तो प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ दूसरा क्या था दे लाहौर लाहौर गिवन सी इज इक्वल टू वन प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ इज गिवन सी इज इक्वल टू वन बाई दिस इज इज नॉट अवेलेबल इन आवर डेटा सेट अब तो इन दिस केस वी विल हैव टू डू सम स्मूदिंग लाइक से एडवांस स्मूदिंग वो एक अप्रोच होती है एंड देन ऑफ कोर्स गुड गिवन सी इज इक्वल टू वन तो ये हम सी इज इक्वल टू वन के लिए भी निकालेंगे टू के लिए भी निकालेंगे थ्री के लिए भी निकालेंगे जितनी भी क्लासेज हैं जिसकी ये प्रोडक्ट सबसे ज्यादा होगी ये डॉक्यूमेंट उस क्लास को बिलोंग करेगा सो दैट्स हाउ वी डू द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफकोर्स इसके साथ प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ सी इज इक्वल टू वन भी लगेगा ठीक है so so these are the base classifiers and the naive base classifiers so we simply use the base rule uh, but the challenge of course or the the way to use it will lead to estimate the terms on the right hand side the two terms the likelihood term and the prior term and their estimation would then of course depend on your training data set and the models that you want to estimate use you want to use to estimate those parameters ठीक है सो पैरामीट्रिक मेथड्स में यू नीड टू अज्यूम ए डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पैरामीट्रिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ओवर द डेटा एंड देन यूज द डेटा टू एस्टिमेट दोज पैरामीटर्स जिस तरह हमने भी ये मल्टीनोमिकली किया ठीक है फॉर नॉन पैरामीट्रिक है यू बेसिकली गो हेड एंड एस्टिमेट द प्रोबिलिटी डेंसिटी डायरेक्टली यूजिंग कर्नल अप्रोच और हिस्टोग्राम अप्रोच और समथिंग लाइक दैट ठीक है once you have those parameters then you can go ahead and use the classifier in future predictions so another classifier that is in theory related to the base classifier but in practice uh, it is uh, in theory it is related to the base classifier but its practice is quite simple in the sense in its use is called the k nearest neighbor classifier इसको हम बेसिकली के एन एन क्लासीफायर भी कहते हैं ठीक है सो इन थ्यूरी दिस इज एक्चुअली रिलेटेड टू जो अभी ऊपर मैंने कहा है हेयर वी आर द आइडिया वुड बी वी आर एस्टिमेटिंग द प्रोबेबिलिटीज यूजिंग ए नॉन पैरामीट्रिक अप्रोच स्पेसिफिकली द के नियरस्ट नेबर डेंसिटी एस्टिमेटर ठीक है बट इन प्रैक्टिस इट्स यूज इज वेरी सिंपल so let me first describe the use and then we'll discuss a little bit about the theory so first of all uh, this method is often distinguished from the many all the other methods that we have studied by saying that this is a lazy classifier so the reasoning behind calling it lazy is that no prior model is built and so there is no model that's built remember in naive base humne ek model banaya tha which is all the parameters that we have estimated yahan koi model nahi banega so simply jab bhi aapne koi classification karni you need to have the data with you 
ठीक है सो क्लासिफिकेशन इज डन पर इंस्टेंस और पर एग्जाम्पल बाय प्रोसेसिंग द डेटा द एंटायर ट्रेनिंग डेटा ठीक है सो लेजी इन द सेंस दैट यू डोंट वर्क बिफोर यू वर्क लेटर और यू ओनली वर्क फॉर ईच क्लासिफिकेशन यू डोंट डू ए लॉट ऑफ वर्क एंड बिल्ड ए मॉडल एंड देन यूज दैट मॉडल इन फ्यूचर क्लासिफिकेशन you only work when you need to classify something and of course you need to have the whole training data with you to do that so in that sense is called lazy classifier instance based classifier bisko kaha jata hai wo maine instance ka keyword bhi yahan use kiya hua hai theek hai ठीक है सो सो के इज ए पैरामीटर ठीक है के इज अ पैरामीटर ऑफ दिस क्लासिफायर सो के इज एक्चुअली डिफाइनिंग द नियरेस्ट नेबरहुड ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ ईच ऑब्जेक्ट ठीक है सो लेट्स से के कुड बी वन एज वेल ऑफ कोर्स दैट वुड नॉट यूजली गिव गुड रिजल्ट्स इन प्रैक्टिस सो इट कुड बी थ्री फाइव एंड हायर एज वेल सो ऑर्ड जनरली रखा जाता है जस्ट टू इंश्योर के टाइज ना हो विच विल सी ऑफकोर्स दिस वुड डिपेंड ऑन द नंबर ऑफ क्लासेस ठीक है सो द आइडिया इज वेरी सिंपल सो वी हैव द ट्रेनिंग डेटा एक्स आई सी आई ठीक है ये ट्रेनिंग डेटा आई इज इक्वल टू वन टू एन सो लेट से वी हैव ए न्यू एक्स दैट वी वॉन्ट टू क्लासीफाई वॉन्ट टू क्लासीफाई दिस न्यू एक्स so what do we do we go to the training data set and find find the k nearest neighbors let's say isko main d keh deta hu data set ko training data ko in b of x theek hai so d hamare paas hai right which is training data i go ahead and find the k nearest neighbors in d of x theek hai of course x may not be in d but nearest neighbors we nikal sakte hain so we need we need a proximity function theek hai this similarity ho sakta hai similarity ho sakta whatever you need to have this some function and as such we don't have any constraint on the types of attributes in x x ke attributes numeric ho sakte hain categorical ho sakte hain as long as you have a way of quantifying the similarity or dissimilarity between two objects theek hai so aapne ye k nearest neighbors dhoondne hain in the training data set once we if we want to classify this x theek hai so in this k nearest neighbor you can then find so let's say k let's say main leta hu 7 hai theek hai k is equal to 7 hai to yahan par seven objects aa jayenge and i can just give them some random numbers theek hai let's say ek mere paas ek 10 aa gaya or let's say c 10 is equal to let's say three class problem ye class 3 hai सेवन uh, वैसे काफी बड़ा नंबर है uh, लिखने में टाइम लग जाएगा लेट मी जस्ट से थ्री थ्री ठीक है सो so, थ्री कर दिया मैंने सो so, अब मेरे पास लेट से एक्स लेट से फिफ्टी भी था उसका सी फिफ्टी जो था वो हमारे पास लेट से थ्री ये भी था थ्री और मेरे पास एक था एक्स टू इसका सी टू था लेट से वन ठीक है सो नाउ वी बेसिकली लुक एट द मेजोरिटी क्लास 
So what is the majority class in the neighborhood of X? So we found the neighborhood containing objects, three objects, because we said K is equal to three. We found three objects that were the nearest to X. One was object 10 in the training data set. The other was object, I think 50. The third was object two. Paledo ki class three thing and the other one was one. So, so basically the best class for X is C is equal to three because this is the majority. So you simply make this classification in this way. So to apply this, as I said, K nearest neighbor approach, you need to set the parameter K and you need to have a function that quantifies the similarity or dissimilarity between objects, that's it. And then given any new object, you need to go into the data set and find the objects, the K objects that are closest to X. And from those labels, you make the classification. So very simple, yet quite powerful. So K nearest neighbor uh, classifier does perform fairly well for many applications. So it is worth trying and using uh, for various applications. Of course, one disadvantage of this method is for each prediction, you need to go into the data set, the training data set, which might be quite large and find the nearest neighbor of the object for which you want to make prediction. So finding the nearest neighbor is not a, in general, a uh, computationally efficient uh, uh, task. It does take time. So in this case, it is not very efficient, computationally efficient. The case nearest neighbor is not very computational, especially if you want to make lots of predictions. If you want to make only a few predictions and your training data set is not very big, so then this is fine. But if you want to make lots of prediction in a very short period of time, then uh, you might be better off building a uh, regular classifier like the base classifier or the decision tree or uh, logistic regression and so on. Okay or even neural networks. So those are all, uh, you can say, pre-trained models. In this case, we don't build a model a priori, we make a prediction at, at runtime. Okay. So the, uh, this method basically depends on the parameter k. So generally, k the one karenge to aapke paas, uh, you are looking at the nearest neighbor, so you might have noisy classifications. K ko zada karenge to aapki classification zada robust hogi. But K bo zada kar de to it might take too much time. You really have to find all those nearest neighbors. Okay, so there is a trade off between that. And of course, it would depend on data size. K is both bada bini ho sakta. You don't want to include all the data. So you won't get good predictions if you're including all the data. You want to only include objects that are close to X. Okay. So I mentioned that this is related to the Bayes uh, classifier and the approach based on non-parametric density estimation. So let me with quickly mention why it is related. So, so essentially, hum kya kar rahe hain? basically, what are we Classical C. given x hum isko is define kar rahe k underline k divided by k theek hai k to hamara jo humne set kiya parameter k underscore k is the class label for is the number of object belonging to class k theek hai so c is equal to k for an object X is the number of objects belonging to class K in the neighborhood of X and the total number of objects in the neighborhood of X, of course, is K. So yeah, probability thing. And is K jo maximum thi, we are take, taking it as our, uh, taking it as our class. Okay. So, and from Bayes' rule, we know that on the right-hand side of K pass K out probability X given C K, Okay. And then we have probability of C is equal to K and then our probability of X, right? So using the K nearest neighbor density estimator, 
वही फॉर्मूला बन जाता है इफ आई राइट द फॉर्मूला हेयर ऑफकोर्स इट विल बी काइंड ऑफ डिफिकल्ट एक्सप्लेन इन ए शॉर्ट टाइम तो प्रॉबलिटी ऑफ एक्स गिवन सी के क्या होगा दिस इज द प्रॉबलिटी ऑफ एक्स और डेंसिटी एस्टिमेशन ऑफ एक्स गिवन सी के ठीक है अब वेन आवर यू टॉक अबाउट एस्टिमेशन आप जो एक एक्स पॉइंट ले रहे हैं उसका नेबरहुड बन रहा है नेबरहुड का कोई वॉल्यूम होगा राइट सो सो नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स बिलोंगिंग टू क्लास के सॉरी सो के के डिवाइडेड बाय नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट बिलोंगिंग टू क्लास के मल्टीप्लाइड बाय सम वॉल्यूम ठीक है एन के बेसिकली हमारे पूरे डेटा सेट में के क्लास के कितने ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैं ठीक है और ये वॉल्यूम आ गया ये चीज टर्म आ गई दूसरी टर्म हमारे पर प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ सी के है तो ये क्या होगा तो दिस इज सिंपली एन के डिवाइड बाय एन ठीक है ये तो बहुत आसान है राइट नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट बिलोंगिंग टू क्लास के डिवाइड बाई टोटल नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट इन ट्रेनिंग डेटा सेट और डिनोमिनेटर में मेरे पास प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स है प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स विदाउट एनी क्लास इज सिंपली आपके पास क्या था उसमें इन द नेबरहुड ऑफ कोर्स के डिवाइड बाय एन इनटू वी तो इफ यू सिंपलीफाई दिस यू सिंपली गेट योर के के डिवाइड बाय के आपका एन के एन और वी कट आउट हो जाते हैं तो वी ऑफ कोर्स इज द नेबरहुड वॉल्यूम ठीक है V भी कट जाएगा एन के भी कट जाएगा एन भी कट जाएगा एंड यू आर लेफ्ट विथ के के ओवर के विच इज वट वी कॉट बिफोर सो एज अ सेड इट हैज इट हैज ए नाइट इट हैज ए बेज इंटरप्रिटेशन एज वेल अज्यूमिंग दैट यू आर डूइंग डेंसिटी एस्टिमेशन यूजिंग द के नियरस्ट नेबर अप्रोच ठीक है सो द के नियरस्ट नेबर बेसिकली क्लासीफायर ए वेरी इजी क्लासीफायर टू अंडरस्टैंड एज वेल एज टू अप्लाई इट माइट बी कम्पिटिशनली एक्सपेंसिव स्पेशली इफ योर ट्रेनिंग डेटा सेट इज वेरी लार्ज एंड यू नीड टू मेक प्रिडिक्शन ऑफ ए लार्ज नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स लॉट्स ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन ए शॉर्ट पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दैन इट मे नॉट बी सुटेबल बट अदरवाइज इट डज गिव यू रीजनेबली गुड रिजल्ट फॉर मैनी अपलिकेशन मतलब मेनली कम्पेटेटिव रिजल्ट आई वुंट से रीजनेबली गुड कम्पेटेटिव रिजल्ट कई दफ़ा ये भी बेस्ट होता है सो यू विल हैव टू ट्राई आउट एंड चेक और राइट सो दिस वाज द के नियर नेबर क्लासीफायर सो वेरी ब्रीफली आई टॉक अबाउट अनसेम्बल क्लासीफायर एंड सैम्बल्स अगेन ऑल दो इनडायरेक्टली हमने कई दफ़ा ये डिस्कस कर लिया अभी ये के नियरस नेबर में भी डिस्कस हुआ है So the idea is use multiple classifiers to make predictions. So instead of relying on one classifier like the k nearest neighbor classifier, we use multiple class. Build multiple classifier. Use the k nearest classifier. Build a decision tree. Build a logistic regression. Use a neural network. और चारों को जितने भी क्लासीफायर बन गए सारों को यूज करें इकट्ठे फॉर मेकिंग प्रडिक्शन ठीक है सो इन दिस केस द बायस ऑफ डिफरेंट क्लासीफायर कैन बी ओवरकम रिमेंबर दिस इज इसका जो पैरल है वो ह्यूमन जजमेंट का पैरल है लेट्स से इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेक अ डिसीजन रिगार्डिंग ए जॉब हायर एंड यू हैव थ्री इंटरव्यूअर्स तो तीन इंटरव्यूअर्स ने एक बंदे को इंटरव्यू किया एंड दे वांट टू मेक अ डिसीजन 
एक बंदे ने का डिसीजन दिए तो यू कैन थिंक ऑफ दो थ्री पीपल एज थ्री क्लासीफायर्स और हर एक का एक अपना डिसीजन होगा एंड हर एक का एक अपना परस्पेक्टिव होगा वैल्यूएशन का हर एक अपना कुछ बायस भी हो सकता है तो इफ यू कम्बाइन ऑल देयर परस्पेक्टिव एज वेल एज बायस यू आर लाइकली टू गेट ए मोर रोबस्ट डिसीजन रेदर देन रिलाइंग ऑन वन पर्सन टू मेक ए जॉब हायर डिसीजन तो सेम आइडिया अप्लाइज टू मशीन एज वेल तो इफ यू आर मल्टीपल क्लासीफायर यू आर लाइकली टू गेट मोर रोबस्ट क्लासीफिकेशन मोर रिलायबल क्लासीफिकेशन so basically wisdom of crowds or experts theek hai so we are exploiting the wisdom of multiple experts so each classifier is an expert and we get its opinion regarding a particular object and then we aggregate that opinion and aggregation ke kai tarike ho sakte hain the most simplest of course is the majority vote uh to that's the simplest way so so let's say just for an example's purpose let's say aapke paas ek uh ek object x hai uski aapne classification karni hai again three class classification problem hai aapke paas let's say teen models hain k n n hai x let's say ye kehta hai ye one hai so k n n x means that this is a k n n classifier k nearest neighbor classifier wo kehta hai ye class 1 pe belong karta hai तो लेट से मेरे पास एक और क्लासीफायर है लेट से रैंडम फॉरेस्ट है बाय द वे रैंडम फॉरेस्ट इट सेल्फ इज एन एनसेम्बल बट हेयर यू कैन कंसीडर टू बी ए सेपरेट क्लासीफायर तो ऑफ एक्स लेट से ये भी कहता है वन है और लेट से एक तीसरा आपके पास लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन है विच बाय द वे डू नॉट टॉक अबाउट इन कोर्स लेट से ये कहता है टू है सो द बेस्ट क्लास मेजोरिटी बेस्ड फॉर एक्स इज सी इज इक्वल टू वन ठीक है because two classifiers say that this is class 1 and one classifier says that this is class 2 so for many uh, practical applications ensemble is a good approach industry application ki main baat karu to i would say ensembling is used quite popularly even in the modern age of deep neural networks and uh, what not ensembles uh, popularly used hote hain and they do give better results in many applications theek okay. hai so आइडिया एसेंशियली यही है कि मल्टीपल क्लासीफायर्स बना लें इंडिपेंडेंट क्लासीफायर्स बना लें एंड देन यूज दैम कॉन्करेंटली वाइल मेकिंग प्रिडिक्शन एंड बाई द वे दो क्लासीफायर दमसेल्व कैन बी क्वाइट सिंपल फॉर एग्जाम्पल के एन एन इज ए सिंपल क्लासीफायर नाई बेज एक बना लें एक कोई और सिंपल लॉजिस्टिक रिएक्शन ले लें रेदर दैन बिल्डिंग अ डीप न्यूर नेटवर्क यू बिल्ड थ्री सिंपल क्लासीफायर्स उनका जो कम्बाइंड परफॉर्मेंस होगा वो maybe be even better than a deep neural network for many practical applications theek hai any questions Okay, no questions. ठीक है इसके बाद कुछ एडिशनल टॉपिक्स मैंने डिस्कस करने थे क्लस्टरिंग में स्टिल हैव टेन मिनट्स मे बी स्टार्ट कर लेता हूँ so we had talked about various clustering algorithms prototype based clusters we have talked about density based clusters we have talked about even graph based clusters and if we talk about algorithm we talked about partitional algorithms and hierarchical algorithms uh so one of the challenges in clustering is 
the challenge of finding the similarity or dissimilarity between objects. Okay. And of course, this is an essential requirement for running a clustering algorithm. If you do not have this, then you cannot do clustering. Okay. Uh, so we have talked about various similarity functions like the for numeric data you can use the Minkowski distance in general. Mahalanobis distance can also be can also be used, which is a scaled version of the Minkowski distance. You can uh, if you have binary data set, then can you use various uh, measures like the Jacquard coefficient or the Sorensen dice or the cosine similarity. If you have text data, cosine similarity can be used. Uh, and then, of course, you can, if you have mixed attribute type, you can combine them in different ways to find uh, their similarity. The one challenge is if you have high dimensional data. So, if you have high dimensional data, think of a text representation where each feature is a word in the corpus. So, total number of words in a corpus could be very large, let's say even 10,000, 20,000, even 100,000. So you can think of each X being represented by a 10,000, so let's say 50,000 long vector. So this is very high dimension. So in high dimension, one of the issues which of course relates to the curse of dimensionality is due to the curse of dimensionality is that it is very hard to quantify exactly the similarity or dissimilarity between objects. Each object would appear to be far away from every other object. And the difference between the similarities between two objects would be very low. Okay. So this is the curse of dimensionality. We talked about this before as well. So each object appears to be at the periphery of the 50,000 dimensional space and its distance from every other object would be high as well as almost similar to the distance from every other object. So it's very difficult to distinguish between objects that are close and objects that are far away. So high dimensional may issue aata and many real world data sets are high dimensional. Usme ek tarika jo use kiya jata hai high dimensional mein which is based on the concept of nearest neighbors is called the shared nearest neighbor similarity. SNN bhi kehta hai isko. Thik hai? So what is the idea here? And what is the intuition behind it? So, so if you think of two objects, x1 and x2, so you can find the nearest neighbors, let's say some fixed number of nearest neighbors for x1 and some fixed number of nearest neighbors for x2. If these nearest neighbors for x1 and x2 are have an overlap, so let me say if I write it mathematically, Let's say I say n x1 is the set of nearest neighbors, generally a k nearest neighbor over of x1. And similarly, so n x2 would be the set of nearest neighbors for x2. So then basically the intersection x1, remember this is a set, intersection of n x2 would be a good indicator of the similarity between x1 and x2. Because uh, if they share common neighbors, then they are likely to be similar. And if the number of common neighbors is high, then they are going to be more similar. Okay, so here we have explicitly 
of course to find those nearest neighbors you are using a similarity but us similarity ko aapne uh, nearest neighbor mein convert kar liya and then you are finding the common ones only and using that number which is the number of common object as a quantification for the similarity so one advantage as i said is this works well when you have high dimensional data because high dimensional data distances would almost always be very small differences honge ek ye object hai x1 ye x2 idhar hai x3 idhar hoga wo thoda sa farak hoga uska distances ke sath x1 aur x2 aur x3 ka x4 idhar hoga x5 idhar hoga but if you rank them nearest neighbors to ye ranking mein aa jayenge to nearest neighbor aapko mil jayenge iske bhi mil jayenge kisi aur ka bhi milenge to if there is common nearest neighbor iska matlab hai those two objects are similar theek hai तो लेट्स से जस्ट टू टेक एन एग्जांपल लेट्स से के मैं ले लेता हूं लेट्स से टेन के नियरेस्ट नेबर्स ठीक है और सो एन ऑफ एक्स वन अगेन टेन बड़ा नंबर हो गया फाइव ले लेता हूं इज इक्वल टू लेट से इसमें मेरे पास आता है ऑब्जेक्ट एक्स ट्वेंटी आता है एक्स थर्टी आता है एक्स फोर्टी आता है एक्स फिफ्टी आता है और एक्स सिक्सटी आता है फाइव एन एक्स टू भी मेरे पास आ जाएगा ठीक है इसमें लेट से एक्स ट्वेंटी आता है एक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव टू फाइव एक्स थर्टी एक्स हो अब इसमें कॉमन ऑब्जेक्ट कितने हैं दो हैं ट्वेंटी एंड थर्टी राइट सो द सिमिलैरिटी बिटवीन एक्स वन एंड एक्स टू वुड सिंपली बी टू और फाइव ठीक है so in one extreme case if there are no common objects the similarity would be zero and the other extreme case if all objects are common the similarity would be one theek hai uh so once you are able to quantify the similarity in this way you can go ahead and apply any uh, clustering algorithm and especially what is preferred would be you apply a density based clustering algorithm because one of the other advantage of this snn approach is that it works well for data sets that have uh, ek to maine kaha na high dimensions hai dusra it works well if you have densities that are very varying they vary quite a bit in your data set maybe ek jagah pe aapko very dense ऑब्जेक्ट क्लोज टुगेदर हैं एक जगह पे आपके पास स्पार्स हैं और उस जगह पे और डेंस हैं फिर स्पार्स हैं या वैरायटी वैरायटी वेरिएशन ऑफ डेंसिटी हो रही है तो देन दिस इज ए गुड वे बिकॉज के नियरेस्ट नेबर वुड एडजस्ट टू द डेंसिटी इफ द डेंसिटी इज हाई द नियरेस्ट नेबर वुड बी क्लोजर इफ द डेंसिटी इज लो द नियरेस्ट नेबर वुड फर्दर अवे ठीक है and usually uh is tarike se jab aap nikalenge to you will get only a few or you won't get many similarities that are uh non zeros only sorry you will yeah you will you will not get only a few similarities that would be non zero most of the similarity would turn out to be zero which is in general is a good thing for clustering sparse remember hum jab graph clustering ki baat kar rahe the we did sparsification and when we talked about similarity measures using let's say the minkowski distance ya manhattan distance ya euclidean distance wo non zero bahut kam chance hota tha uska uh, zero aane ka bahut kam chance hota tha so we had to force them to be zero in this case naturally aapko kafi zeros mil jayenge and you will get a sparse graph or a sparse similarity matrix and running a clustering algorithm on sparse similarity matrix is much more efficient ठीक है तो आई थिंक आई विल स्टॉप हियर एनी क्वेश्चंस
Any questions? So we now have a quiz. So are you after last quiz? Eh? So, so you can now, if you don't have any question, you can then prepare for the quiz. Uh, 